Hi, Andy. We're, we're back again talking about the RTX real-time platform with Ethercat in, in the context of the Industrial Revolution 2.0 that we, we see going on. And today we're going to talk about the platform's value in terms of increased performance over systems that we see out there today. So can you, can you kick us off? Correct. So today we're talking about increasing performance. So here's the diagram we saw in the, in the previous video. So again, this is the traditional industrial system. So when it comes to increasing performance, there's two significant areas that really impede progress or keep customers from actually increasing the performance in the system. And the first one is processor limitations. So we'll get over the get into it, but there'll be a lot of areas inside the industrial PC as well, you know, as, as some other things that we'll talk about later, as things that keep or impede people from having as far as the performance that they want. And then we'll also get into another area which is huge, is bus limitations. So there's a lot of interesting and very powerful bus technologies out there, but there's a lot of limitations with them that keep, again, developers from doing what they desire in, in getting the performance that they want out of their systems. Okay. So if we can take this before photo, and here is the same system going to the RTX real-time platform with EtherCAT, you know, we're going to talk about in a minute how we can get away from those processor limitations and really have true real-time multi-core x86 hardware. So we'll talk about how we can get that kind of processing and, and really affect the industrial PC and, and remove those limitations. We'll then also talk about high performance bus. So how can we replace a lot of the, the bus limitations we had before? And we'll get into details in a minute, but we're gonna move to you know, truly a high performance, you know, scalable bus for an industrial system. But what kind of change, I mean, I know we're, we're talking about performance here, but what kind of uh, cost issues now will arise in introducing this these elements into the system. Good point. So we actually talked earlier about how this platform reduces costs. So we're going to show how you can actually g increase performance as well, you know, in processor as well as bus technology while still maintaining, if not reducing your costs as well. So by no means are you going to have a negative impact on your cost. Again, uh, we've talked in the last several videos about the platform, but let's review it quickly in, in, in the context of performance. Absolutely. So they get everyone on the same page. So the RTX real-time platform with EtherCAT, at the base of it all, the foundation is multi-core x86 hardware. So this is really big in the fact that you're, again, leveraging Intel and AMD's multi-core roadmaps sure. using commercial off-the-shelf hardware. So this is big. You're moving away from proprietary architectures such as DSPs and FPGAs. On top of that, you've got Microsoft Windows for the powerful Windows experience. And then when you combine it with RTX, that transforms Windows into a real-time operating system. So you have the world-class you know, user experience with Microsoft, and you have you know, true symmetric multiprocessing with RTX, which we'll see an example of later. But essentially, again, you have a real-time operating system leveraging both Microsoft and then RTX. On top of that, we've got communications, real-time Ethernet. So EtherCAT is a real-time Ethernet protocol. So this is a high-performance communications bus that happens to use standard CAT5 cabling. And then for a customer, they will focus on the top level of the platform, and this is where they integrate their intellectual property and applications, leveraging all these proven and established technologies underneath. And doing so, you'll be using, as a developer, a single integrated development environment, and that's Visual Studio. So no longer will you have segregated tool sets. You'll have a unified tool set and code base. Okay, let's talk performance. Absolutely. So getting into it again, so here's the before photo. We talked about processor limitations and bus limitations. First, diving into the industrial PC itself. So if we were to crack this case open, what you'll find is, you know, there'll be a motherboard there, and this is, you know, commercial off-the-shelf hardware. But what you'd usually find is plug-in cards. So plug-in cards, for example, these have DSPs on them. They could have microcontrollers. But these plug-in cards do various things, such as controlling I.O., doing real-time input and output of the system. A lot of times, they're motion cards. There's a lot of intellectual property that's on these proprietary cards cards that are helping to control the motors. So a lot of the real-time processing has been really tied and fixed to these cards and these processors. So the problem with that is, is yes, you're able to use some commercial off-the-shelf hardware, but a lot of times you're tied to these proprietary boards and architectures. So what happens is you're limited by how fast the DSP roadmaps are going. You know, are they doubling performance as fast as you want? Are the board manufacturers making, you know, advances as fast as you like? So there's a lot of constriction here. And not 
not to mention you sometimes run out of uh, ISA or PCI slots, so you simply can't expand the system anymore. Okay. okay? So that's a huge uh, limitation as far as keeping people from increasing the performance of the IPC. Going outside of the industrial PC onto the bus, there's a lot of issues which we kind of talked about already, but if you look, you know, there's a lot of, you know, wiring uh, as far as constriction. Not only here we see the separate safety harnesses, but a lot of times existing, you know, communication buses have fixed topologies. You really can't be very flexible, say you add another dozen motors to your system or you have, you know, X amount of axes that you're trying to control. A lot of times there's topologies that, that are very constrictive and they won't let you do what you want. So again, it forces you to have very complex wiring and sometimes getting it very messy and very hard to scale for the future. So bus limitations are very big with whatever, you know, bus technology that you might be on. Let's take a look at the platform view. Absolutely. So. Moving to the same system when you, you implement it on, on the RTX real-time platform or Ethercat. So first, let's, you know, we're going to dive into what's inside of the industrial PC. So here is that same commercial, you know, off-the-shelf motherboard. This time, though, because we combine Windows and RTX, right, it transforms Windows into a real-time operating system. So here you have Windows doing the human-machine interface, some complex UI, and we have a dedicated real-time core here. So we've taken one of the x86 cores mm -hmm. for real-time processing. So it's, that's the, essentially the RTOS. And remember before, we had these plug-in cards that did motion and any type of real-time processing. Well now, since we have RTX, we're able to have real-time processing on the x86 core. So essentially, we can move this DSP logic onto the dedicated core. As a result, we're able to remove those plug-in cards. So what before required these additional dedicated cards to do real-time processing, we have true real-time processing dedicated to one of the x86 cores here on this uh, standard commercial off-the-shelf board. And a smaller footprint. Absolutely. So you're able to reduce the size of your industrial PC, truly leveraging commercial off-the-shelf hardware. So you're able to do real-time processing with x86. Okay. And going to the bus structure, we'll get into it in a little bit, but just again in a highlight, you saw this in a previous diagram. By having a streamlined wiring, Ethercat allows you to combine your bus so it has both a, the safety as well as a communication bus all on a single Cat5 cable. So I'll get into later a little more detail about Cat5, okay. but just from the IPC, it's already been a huge impact as far as how you can scale and have performance. So here's an example, you know, traveling around, we see a lot of typical examples using EtherCAT. And in this, this one example here, again, it's an industrial PC. This inside of it has a quad core system. Mm -hmm. So again, standard commercial off the shelf hardware. These are just four cores, again, combining Windows and RTX. Here we have one core dedicated for Windows, three for RTX. So what's nice about RTX is it supports something called symmetric multiprocessing. And what that allows you to do is you can actually dedicate cores for full applications and for dedicated performance. So here we have Windows, of course, doing the human machine interface, doing what it does best, the world-class UI. Here on the first real-time core, we have a soft PLC running there. So remember we were saying before you had DSP cards, now you can actually implement it all in, in as far as a, a soft version. You know, a lot more performance, a lot more flexibility. On these remaining two real-time cores, we actually have two EtherCAD master stacks running. So this is actually something very common you'll find. EtherCAD was designed with symmetric multiprocessing in mind. So you can actually run multiple stacks. And in this example, we have a, a motion bus in addition to an I.O. bus, so they're separate. That's not only done for ease of integration, but it's also great for expansion because, for example, the motion bus and I.O. Bus, I bus might be on different sampling rates. So because of that, you may not want to have them combined onto a single stack. So this is just one example of how Again, using the RTX real-time platform with EtherCAD, we're able to take standard commercial off-the-shelf hardware, and with symmetric multiprocessing, we can easily dedicate performance and have a really nice partition system, while still the performance, you know, extreme high performance of multiprocessing. Okay. okay. So let's get to EtherCAD. So we've covered kind of the processing side of things. So remember we talked about a lot of the bus limitations. The one thing you need to know about EtherCAT, it's, it's real-time real time down to the I.O. level. So what I mean by that is there's no delays in the gateways. 
So as you create all of the flexible topologies that Ethercat supports, like star, tree, line, you know, ring, and you can actually combine uh, variations of these, you essentially have very high performance, you know, a high performance bus. Because of those, uh, there's essentially no delays in the gateways. So to give and help uh, paint a picture of how high performance Ethercat is, we're just going to look at a high performance example. So this was a, an example that was done and implemented on Ethercat. So inside of this example, so this is actual. We're talking. This is real. So the, this was done just to kind of show like really what Ethercat can do. So this example used 40 axes of motion, 560 Ethercat bus terminals, 2,000 digital plus 200 analog I/O and a bus length of 500 meters. So, so not an inconsiderable system. No, this is a, by no means a trivial system. This is a pretty powerful system and with a pretty large bus length. That's pretty extreme. So this entire system running on Ethercat ran with a cycle time of 276 microseconds. I mean, that was incredibly fast. And even, as you can see, that same application was ported to some other competing bus technologies. You can see it was, you know, quite a bit faster than like Circles 3 or Profinet and significantly faster than PowerLink. But what was not interesting is not only its speed, but the fact that it only took a 40, 4% of the bus load, so there was still 56% of the bus remaining, so you could actually do something like TCP IP on top of that. So again, not only is it high performance, but it's very flexible. We can actually run multiple protocols on top of it as well. Okay. Okay. So coming back to here, so we kind of summarized, this is the after effects of if you implement on the RTX real-time platform with Ethercat. We, you know, going through some of the previous slides, you know, really you're getting rid of a lot of limitations in processing because when you combine Windows and RTX on, on standard x86, you can have true real-time multi-core x86 processing. And we saw that pretty clear using symmetric multiprocessing. And then coming back to Ethercat, you truly have a high performance bus that's very flexible. So that removes a lot of the barriers you had in, in re reaching or, or designing your optimal system. Great. So just wanted to show what's coming up. So in our next video, we're going to talk about how the RTX real-time platform specifically addresses safety. Good. Thanks again, Andy. Thank Appreciate you, it. Thank you, Brian. Bye-bye.